All right, so we are doing section 1.5 today. Make sure you put <clears throat> this under the title section at the top of your notes, um, including your name, your class, the date today, and the learning objectives, which are on the unit plan. Here's the first, our first learning objective is to write the standard form of the equation of a circle. Don't write this down unless you really don't know what it is. A circle is a set of points that are a fixed distance r from a fixed point h, comma k. So we have our center, h, k, and then we have all the points that are r distance from that center. All right, definitely write this down. The standard form of the equation of a circle with a radius r and center h k is parenthesis x minus h squared, close parenthesis squared, plus parenthesis y minus k, close parenthesis squared, equals r squared. The trickiest part of that is remembering that whatever the radius is in the equation, it's squared. Also, that whatever h and k are in the equation, you are going to take the opposite of your h value and the opposite of your k value. Uh, standard form of the equation of a circle, uh, radius r with center at the origin. Um, the H, when you're at the origin, in your equation, the H and K go away, and you just have X squared plus Y squared equals R squared. When your radius is equal to 1, this is called a unit circle. So X squared plus Y squared equals 1 is a circle with its center on the origin and a radius of 1. We are going to use the heck out of this concept um, later on in the continuing chapter. So definitely write this down, put a box around it, um, star it, and say, we will use this for later. All right, so this is the unit circle. <clears throat> write this example in your notes. Uh, we're going to write the standard form of the equation of a circle with a radius of 4 and a center of 2, comma, negative 4. So we're going to take the opposite of 2, which is minus 2, put it in our equation, the opposite of negative 4, which is plus 4, put it in the equation. Um, and then we have a radius of 4, so it's going to go 4 squared. So x minus 2 squared plus x plus 4 squared equals 16. All right. Learning objective number two is graphing a circle. So we're going to graph the equation x minus 4 squared plus y plus 1 squared equals 9. So we find our coordinate, and it's the opposite of what's in our equation. So it's positive 4, comma, negative 1. And our radius is the square root of 9, which is 3. So then we plot that point on our graph. And I do want you to write this down in your notes. So we plot the point 4, negative 1 in our graph. And then what I do is when I'm graphing, I count to the right three units, two, three, put a dot. I count north three units, put a dot, west three units, put a dot, and south three units, put a dot. So that way I have at least four coordinates when I'm hand drawing. I have, I'll have four coordinates on my circle that are actually accurate, the rest of them. Um, well, I'm sketching it, so it's not going to be a perfect circle because I'm sketching it. All right. So if you have your circle <clears throat> that we just graphed and you want to find its intercepts, 
you look at where it crosses the x and y axis. This circle does not cross the y axis at all, so it doesn't have any y intercepts, but it crosses the x axis at two distinct points. So when I plug in 0 for y to find my x intercepts, and I simplify it down, I get x minus 4 squared. So we take the square root, which is x minus 4 equals plus or minus square root of 8, because when you take a square root of both sides, you have to account for the positive answer and the negative answer. Square root of 8 simplifies down to plus or minus 2 root 2. So then I have x minus 4 plus or minus 2 root 2. I add the 4 to both sides, and my x-intercepts are at 4 plus 2 root 2 and 4 minus 2 root 2, which is approximately equal to 6.83 and 1.17. So once again, for our y-intercepts, we can see that, looking at the graph, there are no y-intercepts, but if there were, we would plug in 0 for the x value and solve for y. Um, and if we did that in this case, we'd get no real solutions. All right, three out of three. This is our third learning objective. We're going to work with the general form of the equation of a circle. Here is the general form of the equation of a circle. x squared plus y squared equals ax plus by plus c equals 0. It's when we multiply out those x plus h squareds and the y plus k, or y, x minus h squareds and the y minus k squareds. And then we move the radius back to the left-hand side we get the general form of the equation of a circle. Sorry, I had a little mishap with my slide. So go ahead and write this equation on your paper. x squared plus y squared minus 8x plus 4y minus 5. We're going to graph this equation. We're going to graph this equation by completing the squares. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to move this minus 5 over to the other side of the equation. So we're going to add the 5 to both sides. So your number goes all by itself on the right-hand side. So it's going to become the radius. Then we group our x's together, and we group our y's together. We are going to complete the square. So those of you guys who thought you could forget about completing the square, I'm sorry, this is a spoiler alert. We're going to complete the square again. So we need to complete the square for our x values and complete the square for our y values. So we're going to put two, whatever I add to this x part, I'm going to add to the right-hand side. And whatever I add to my y part, I'm also going to add that to my right-hand side because to keep an equation equal, whatever I add to the left, I'm going to add to the right, um, <clears throat> et cetera, et cetera. So completing the square, we take our second term so for us in this x part, it's negative 8. We're going to divide that by 2. Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. And then we're going to square it, which will be 16. So I'm going to add 16 here and add 16 here. I'm going to do that same process with the 4 here. I'm going to divide it by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. <clears throat> so make sure you write that part down. I have it memorized, so I don't, I'm not going to write it down, but 
for those of you guys who don't know or forgot, um, you take your coefficient, divide it by 2, add it to both sides. When we do that, <clears throat> we got eight, x squared minus 8x plus 16 becomes x minus 4 squared. The reason we complete the square is so we can get a squared term. And then we got y plus 2 squared is equivalent to y squared plus 4y plus 4. 5 plus 16 plus 4 is 25. So now we have this in, a, we go from the general form to the standard form, and we can now graph this. We know that our center is at 4, negative 2, and we know our radius is 5. So once again, when I graph this, I put my dot at 4, negative 2, and I count to the right 5. I put a dot. I count north 5, and I put a dot. Count left 5, and I put a dot. And I count south 5, and I put a dot. So at least my circle hits 4 points instead of the way I do it without graphing utility. All right. <clears throat> if you're going to use your graphing calculator to graph a circle, you have to make sure you solve for y um, and graph both the positive and the negative form um, of your equation. So in this case, we would subtract x squared from both sides and then take the square root. And remember, when you take the square root, you got the plus and the minus answer. So it'll graph the positive form will be this top part of the circle, and then the negative form will be the bottom part of your circle. Um, a lot of times it will leave a gap right around the intercept, or right around the um, diameter portion. Um, you just have to be okay with that. So if you zoom in close, it, the gap's not there. But it doesn't want to touch <clears throat> zero. And that's the end of our story for today. Make sure um, you include a summary for each set of your notes. Um, you don't have to do it at the time. You could do it after you take the practice and the quiz um, for this section. But just go back and make sure you're looking at your notes again. The summary is a way of solidifying the information in your brain a little bit better. It's synthesizing it. Um, it's creating neurons. And that's why we do it.